Welcome to my channel. This is Divesta Diamonds. You have arrived. So before I begin this video, I would like to say thank you. Thank you to each and every one of you for your continued support. But also, thanks a million to all you wonderful new subscribers for taking the time out to check out my channel. I really appreciate you all. Thank you. So in this video, we are going to talk about this woman. Okay, I'll be responding to a video she had made about divesters. It's your typical low vibrational bullshit made by a pretentious fan. I'm going to start calling them fans because really that's what they are. They can't stop talking about us. These are fans of divesters, whether they want to admit it or not. That's just what it is. Now she goes by the name Kia Roan, and she has a lot of things to say. So without further ado, let's get started. Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. Thank you so much for being here, and I really appreciate your time. I am going to be giving my thoughts and opinion on this investment movement. This is not a subject that I have talked about on my channel a lot because it's not really an internet space that I personally partake in a lot. So last night I was on Christie's live, I was like actually in the live chat, and she was talking about how she is getting shaded a lot by these divestment channels that basically say that she's wasting black women's time because she is still telling them how to be acceptable and beautiful, how to get a good black man, and that she is stuck in blackistan. Just all the little comments that a lot of times you see these channels making. So there was a point in her live where I guess someone got a notification that is um, a part of the divestment movement and they all kind of swarmed in <laughs> on her live chat and they started you know going in you saw different you know comments from women with you know names like divestment beauty divestment goddess and all this other you know those types of names and unfortunately what I experienced firsthand is that there was so much anti-blackness and for me I'm just sitting here like how are we, how are black women participating in this? Here we go again. Another pro-black mammy talking shit about divesters when she doesn't even know what the movement is all about. This is why I do these videos because I have noticed that divesters are heavily misunderstood. And in these people's minds, divestment is deemed as a problematic concept when it's really not. Now, I would be embarrassed to sit in front of a camera spewing nonsense about something that I don't understand. What's really funny is the women who keep doing this are supposed to be married to black men. They are in these black love relationships, right? But somehow, it's very weird. Somehow, they are still concerned about other black women who are divesting from the so-called community. The same community that never celebrates them or their achievements. True divesters do not spew anti-blackness rhetoric, okay? They have decided to divorce themselves from a community that wants to continuously keep them captive to satisfy the urges of black men. The relationship between black men and women in Blackistan only benefits the men, not the women. But how dare you choose to want to distance yourself from the community, right? The same community that subjugates you. How dare you? You can't do that, black women. You need to put up with it. You need to shut up and stop being self-haters. Date your own kind. You see, anti-blackness is not promoted in divestment. The black woman's immediate threat is the black man. We don't eliminate them from our lives simply because of the color of their skin. We do that because they are dangerous men who just happen to be black. Let's continue. How does this make us any different from black men? If your movement 
perpetuates the same anti-blackness that we are supposed to be against when black men say anti-black things and promote anti-blackness, your movement is not any better. And it doesn't help black women. Anti-blackness will never help black women. So I don't understand how this basically became what it is. Like there were women in, in the comment section posting gorilla emojis and calling black men bullets bullet bags and just it was just very bizarre and strange to me because I'm just like wait if your whole movement is about abandoning black men because they perpetuate anti-blackness and colorism and abuse and poverty and all these other things you know that you blame black men for why in the world would you then join a movement who is basically reversing all of that and is still promoting anti-blackness. I don't understand why you would think that anti-blackness is going to save you or cause you to have better results. You know, if these women fought as hard for black women as they do for the men who are deleting them on a constant basis, we would have been further along, away from this toxicity and in a much better place. So, we're just supposed to be okay, right? We're supposed to be accepting of people like O'Shea Duke Jackson and the rest of the Manosphere, Kevin Samuels, Minister Jap, David Carroll, The Amazing Lucas, Red Supreme, Tommy Sotomayor, and the rest of these other people who call black women derogatory terms for entertainment? Are we not supposed to react? I don't really think that these cape queens, because that's what they are. I don't think that these cape queens fully understand the history of this YouTube drama. We've been called bitches, hoes, bed wenches, German shepherds, weave queens, hair-hatted hooligans, and many other disparaging terms that these black men could think of. They don't even look at us as women. They say that we are too masculine and that we are divesters. Let me spell that. D-I-E, vesters. Do you not see the problem? They call black women these females because that's what we are to them. And yes, we are female. That's our sex, but it's never used in context. It's always used in a demeaning fashion because the aim here is to rob us of our womanhood and humanity and show the world how much they hate us. Their hatred for black women is always on display. So you're worried about black women calling them bullet bags and everything else you just mentioned, but you don't see the issue with how toxic they are to black women? You don't see the disrespect? You don't see the denigration to black women? And by the way, how shall I put this? You didn't fill in your brows properly. You know, just looking out for you, girl. See, I'm a woman first. Everything else is secondary. I'm pro-black woman, not pro-black community. I would never, and I repeat, I would never, ever put my life on the line for a quote-unquote community that doesn't value me. That's just crazy. Let's continue. And so that's what I want to talk about in this video is this notion that there is this demon, there's this demonization of blackness in general, because I don't know if you women realize that is if you are regurgitating the same racist talking points about black men that white men say, I don't understand why you think that's going to bring y'all closer together. Like, I don't, like, I don't, I don't understand this. Anti-blackness is anti-blackness. And it's problematic across the board, period. The mammyism is strong here, okay? Here's the thing. 
No true divester is out here regurgitating racist talking points. The issue with a lot of you mammies is anyone who so much as disagrees with you, okay? Anyone who disagrees with your programming or has a difference of opinion is dubbed a self-hater or racist. You can't handle the truth. And this has always been the issue in the so-called community. The reason the black community is fucked up is because all you have done is lie to one another and allowed your black leaders or those in charge to elevate themselves at your expense. Look at Umar Johnson. Where is the school? How much money have majority of black women given to that man for a school that will never come to fruition? You have way too many of these snake oil salesmen who benefit off of the misery of black women just so they could line their own pockets. These are the same people who use quote unquote racism as a way to keep subjugating you. The truth of the matter is they will never admit just how lazy they are and how comfortable they have become enjoying the fruits of other men's labor. As long as they keep calling you queen and blaming everything on racism, you are just more than happy to regurgitate their talking points. How does it feel to be a doormat? Let's continue. It's not negative or detrimental to our community only when black men do it. But there is no community though. I mean, you can sit there and talk about having a community, but you and I both know that there is no such thing as a black community in this country. You can't have a community in organized chaos. It's like I've said before, you can't have a community without understanding the need for tolerance, respect, set goals, and working together. You can organize gangs and other criminal activity quite well, but even that falls apart at some point because, well, there is no honor among thieves. Let's continue. It's a problem regardless of who, of who perpetuates it. Colorism is a problem regardless of who perpetuates it. And let me be very real with you. If you're looking to attract a man that would be considered high value or that would make a good partner in a long, like in a long term way of speaking, you don't want to be with a white man, especially a white man that's attracted to your self deprecation. Because no respectable white man is going to be with a woman who self deprecates. For example, do you think Lauren Hamilton's husband was attracted to her because she was a self-deprecating self black woman? No. And I bought her up because I know a lot of y'all look up to her, you know, her little situation. And kudos to you, girl. I'm, I'm very happy for Lauren. But I don't understand how y'all uh, have these ideas as a core part of this movement. The core part of the divestment movement is not to uphold self-deprecating behavior. Where do you get all this shit? Where are you getting this from? Sorry, not sorry, but you're talking out of your ass. It's like I've mentioned before, there's a difference between swirlers and divesters. You're describing swirlers here, not divesters. Again, let me reiterate this. Everybody calling themselves divesters are not necessarily divested. And just because someone has a channel with divestment talking points doesn't make them a divester either. Examples, Crystalline Karazin, right? She's a swirler. She's not a divester. And she did say so herself. Cynthia G, Nyla, and Taz Exclusives, those are not divesters, even though 
they spend a lot of their time using divestment talking points in their videos. And while we're on this subject, let me just point something out. Black men are not part of the divestment movement. Divestment talking points have become popular because they bring clicks and views to people's channels. Your arguments are flawed because you don't know what you're talking about. This is embarrassing. And any true divester would never be in a relationship with a problematic non-black man who encourages self-deprecating behavior. This is not who we are. I have already done a video of black and mixed race women embarrassing themselves on TikTok doing slavery inspired videos with their white boyfriends. It's disgusting. It's unacceptable. True divesters do not tolerate that nonsense. We don't date or marry weak racist men of any race. The divestment journey starts with safety first, okay? Changing your location followed by getting your new life together. After that comes therapy, self-care, getting your mind right. Relationships should come after you've done the work on yourself. Why would any divester leave a toxic community with toxic relationships just to end up in the same situation all over again? Does that make sense to you? And who says that all divestors need to be in any kind of relationship? Divestment is about self-preservation, finding yourself, finding happiness, choosing you above all else, even if it means ending up alone. It's not about dating white men or men of other races. You are the most important part of the divestment journey. Everything else outside of that comes later. Let's continue. And listen, I understand that there is definitely space to criticize black men. There's definitely conversations that should be ongoing, which point the mirror at black men and demand that they take accountability for the things that they have directly done to affect the black community in negative ways. I'm here for that all day. Those conversations need to happen. Black women have been trying to hold black men accountable for their actions, or lack thereof, for a very long time. They refuse to have this conversation because they put their victimhood above everything and everyone else. Black men do not want to change. They have never wanted to change because that would mean competing with other men both at home and on the world stage. And they refuse to do that because they don't want to put in the work on an individual level, perhaps, but collectively. It's easier to ride someone else's coattail and go unnoticed because when shit hits the fan, you can always point the finger at someone else. They don't want that responsibility. They have mastered the art of victimhood and unaccountability. And in any case, why should anyone keep asking them to take accountability? Don't all adult humans know that in order to thrive, you have to be able to look at yourself and analyze what it is that you are doing right or wrong? Why must they always be placated and treated like children? This is also part of the reason the so-called community has always been a matriarchy. Because goodness knows, you can't be running after grown-ass men with children's mindsets all day. It's too stressful, and nobody's got time for that. Let's continue. Those conversations need to happen, and that is why I find myself oftentimes in opposition to those, you know, pro-black women, pro-black man, black women, who act as if black men are just a victim of racism and they're just a victim and they can't do anything. They don't really have any power to change anything. So we just have to coddle them and make them feel better. When they come home, we just have to love on them and, and um, hopefully our vaginas can save them from racism. 
But you're doing exactly like those women that you're trying to distance yourself from. You're no different. I mean, all of a sudden, you're better than them? When you're out here cheerleading for black men? Girl, please, you're a pro-black mammy. It's written all over you. All that is nonsense, too. But at the same time, this idea that you spend all day in these, in these you know, online communities bashing black men, calling black men racist names, and equating them to racist things, that somehow makes you better and less detrimental to the black community? No true divester is creating or perpetuating racism. You as a woman do not have the right to tell other black women who've been negatively impacted by black men how to react. You don't have the right. What you need to do is stop policing black women's emotions. Cheerleading for them will not give you a leg up and these men will not treat you any better no matter how much cleavage you show. Let's continue. Are you crazy? Like, I don't, I don't understand that. Like that, I don't understand that cognitive dissonance. Like that's a, that's, that's really wild to think that you want to leave Blackistan to get away from these toxic black men. And then you're, you're creating and perpetuating racism. And what I think is very interesting is what I think a lot of women are not really ready for this. And might, I might get backlash for this. If, you know, a lot of people end up seeing this video. I honestly feel like in the same ways that you see these, you know, black men online talking about, oh, we're going to leave black women. We're going to leave y'all. And then you end up seeing Tyrone with an overweight Becky. I think there's a lot of that happening as well on on the other side. I don't I don't really think that either way there's this there's this idea that once you once you leave the black community, you your 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 attractiveness goes up points. Like if you're a 5 in a black community, once you leave the black community, you you, you get to be an 8. No, baby, that's not <laughs> that's not the case. That's not the case for men and it's not the case for women. It's not. Actually, when most black women date out, not all, the majority of them usually date or marry aesthetically pleasing men of other races. Sadly, I can't say the same for black men. When most of them date out, they are not getting the cream of the crop from other communities. You really don't have to be a beautiful woman of another race to be with a black man. They will date you, obese or unattractive, simply because you are a different ethnic group or race. Skin color is what's important to black men. And as far as putting numbers on people, the so-called black community usually raises the bar of attractiveness, mostly for black women and not black men. You have overweight, unattractive men who haven't seen their peen or feet in years. Ugly as fuck, rating black women. Now, ain't that some shit? <laughs> the audacity of it all. Plus, black men usually rate black women on phenotype and skin tone because they are the biggest perpetuators of colorism. You, for instance, okay? And I'm going to use you as an example because you're talking a lot of shit right now. And I know you said you're married, but on average, your rating would be quite low you would probably be rated a five, maybe mm, five and a half, and they would consider you average. And don't get it twisted. They will sleep with you, right? They'll turn you into a baby mama, but majority of them wouldn't call you a preference. I'm just saying, I'm not calling you unattractive at all, but you and I both know the type that they go for. Black males are the biggest colorists because they are not affected by it. They are more than happy to perpetuate it though. Even ugly black men think that they have a right to be with beautiful women. This is the delusion that they live under. The sad part of it is that black women do entertain unattractive black men. And even more so when they have a little bit of money. 
women of other races will and do marry them for the bag. Since the standard of beauty varies from one community to the next, black women, believe it or not, do fare well in other communities too, because they have something extra to offer. Their dedication and loyalty to relationships and the very education that the so-called community demonizes them for. Again, stop Charlie Browning this conversation because you know nothing. Let's continue. And I, I really think that that's not discussed more, this idea that, and mind you, I understand that black men in particular per perpetuate colorism such that certain features will never be embraced. I understand that. And like I said, there's conversations happening about that. There, black men have been held accountable for this multiple times. But at the same time, like I said, if you're a five in the black community, you're not going to go around white men and all of a sudden become an eight. It's just not, it's just not the truth, sweetheart. It's just not. Yes, you would. The standard of beauty in the so-called community is skewed. Because these men want you to jump through hoops for no reason. The whole community's beauty standards are set by men who luxuriate in the low self-esteem of black women. They enjoy seeing you in pain. Even beautiful women don't stand a chance. Look at Jay-Z and Beyonce. Beyonce could have gotten herself in a relationship with any man of her choosing from any race but she was coerced by her parents to get married to ugly ass, unfortunate looking Jay-Z who had nothing of value to offer her. The only thing that he helped do was shrivel her self-esteem and turn her into a mule. He cheated on her and ruined her career. She is a shell of the person that she used to be and that wretched husband of hers has a lot to do with that. Her mammying mother doesn't help either. If only Beyonce had opened her options, she would be singing a different song by now. Hmm, I can guarantee you that she would be in a much better place. But she settled. She settled for a low-grade gangster criminal who continues to shrink her. And as a fellow Virgo, my heart bleeds for her because I couldn't imagine being slowly suffocated by the likes of him. Let's continue. And if you really believe that to the point where you find yourself saying anti-black things, praising white men on the internet, that looks crazy. That looks crazy. It's not attractive. Well, divestors don't go around praising men based on skin color, nor do we support racism or racists. You can pass that card onto the swirlers because majority of them don't seem to know how to vet these men anyway. I'll give you an example. Crystalline Karazin's white Canadian boyfriend used the N-word, okay, on Clubhouse. And to add a little bit of context, some crazy black dude who was, I guess, not very happy that this black woman was dating a white guy came on to Clubhouse and called him an N-word lover, okay? And do you know what he did in retaliation to that dude? He repeated what that guy said with a hard R. So I'm just saying, it doesn't matter if somebody comes on there to heckle you. Some things are not meant to be repeated. That's all I'm saying. That guy embarrassed the melanin off of her and allegedly they broke up not too long after that. So go talk to her about it and hear what she has to say. What you're saying should not be directed towards divestors. This sounds like a swirling issue to me. And this is why you have women like this one over here, right? Wearing a Confederate battle facial diaper, trying to pass herself off as a divester, which she knows damn well, that's a lie. This right here is a swirler, okay? Shameless swirler. Do your homework, sweetheart. 
because divestors, true divestors, do not behave this way. In the same way that black men look crazy when they run around on the internet talking about how the snow bunnies is this and the stargates, that looks crazy. It all looks, it looks crazy whenever you are pedestalizing another race. I can totally agree with that. Pedestalizing any race of men is crazy. But thank goodness that true divestors don't do that. Self-love comes first and we don't pedestalize anyone. We don't fetishize anyone either. Let's continue. That is never attractive. That is never okay. And it's always going to be anti-black. I, I can't really get down with this movement. You know, other, I have had a few encounters like on Clubhouse and, you know, coming across a couple of videos, my recommendations based off of the, you know, cross promotion of the audiences. And I'll see certain videos that YouTube recommends to me and I'll start watching the video and I'm like, what the fuck is this? What is this crazy woman talking about? And then, like, I'll be on Clubhouse, and I'll be in a room that's, like, you know, holding, you know, a room that's, you know, discussing relationships and why in a black community a lot of our relationships are not lasting. And it'll basically turn into a bash black men room, and all they'll do is be on stage calling black men broken. Black men don't have this. And I understand, yes, collectively, black men well, the black community in general, does not have a certain amount of wealth. I understand that. And for the black men that do, like my husband, that have wealth, it's it's not in high numbers, right? So I understand that conversation. But to just sit on a platform and say that if a black woman stays with a black man, you know, she'll, she'll, she'll be in poverty. And if she has a child, just being in proximity to a black man will just bring you, like, that type of stuff to me is anti-black. It's that same, you know, birth of a nation-esque rhetoric about the black man being this, you know, mandingo, stupid, sexually charred. Like, you have to understand you sound like a slave master. You have to know this. Wow. <laughs> so women who point out the obvious sound like slave masters? Here's the thing. Why are black women not allowed to voice their experiences on common issues faced by other black women in the so-called community? You know absolutely well that majority of black men are broke. Therefore, it's very difficult for black women dating them to practice hypergamy. Additionally, how are these women supposed to build with these men who have nothing to offer. Furthermore, most black men hate responsibility. Having children with them is a huge risk. The chances are you're not gonna be the only one. So your health is already at risk. They don't have enough disposable income to take care of the household. Most of them do not have the finances to take care of the woman after birth. They also complain about taking care of the children, the same children that they help create. They complain about paying child support as if they don't understand how children are made and that children have needs and must be taken care of. They won't get vasectomies either because they want to be able to sling their pain with as many women as possible, creating more children who grow up fatherless with abandonment issues. So where is your empathy for other black women? Or is that solely reserved for black men? Burn the cape. Please burn the cape. You have to understand that you sound like a slave master living in Jim Crow when you talk about black men like that. Like, especially if it's just coming from a place of bitterness. Because in the same manner that we can recognize and black men are talking about black women and they start bashing them and we immediately say, oh, who hurt you? I said the same thing to you black women in the divestment movement. Who hurt you? Was it your father? Was it the bunch of black men that, you know, rejected you, made you feel like you were corny, made you feel like you weren't cute? Heal from that. Don't spew your, 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 your toxicity on the internet. And... Just like when black men don't address those traumas 
and they create these spaces where they find other black men who feel rejected. I, I just don't understand why when black men do it, it's so obvious, it's so clear what it is. But black women in these divestment spaces are literally sounding exactly like black men, and it's okay? You sound extremely dumb. Like I said, wrong party, honey. But I'll tell you who hurt and continues to hurt black women and children. The very man that you are defending. It shouldn't have to be a debate on why black women choose to leave a dangerous so-called community. You seem to have a lot of smoke for black women, but keep cruising over black men's contribution to these issues. You are basically putting on a modern day minstrel show, black community style. You are pandering to black men and going against black women for black male attention. I told you ladies, these women love the attention of black men, married or not. All this pandering and tap dancing for Scooby Snacks gets you nowhere. You look stupid. I can literally smell the desperation through the computer screen. How sad. Just pathetic. No, it's not okay. It's weird. <laughs> it's weird as fuck. I'm never going to be a part of these online movements that basically replace one negative fallacy for another. Nobody wants you here anyway. I mean, you put your face on the internet, looking like a dumbass, talking about a movement that you didn't bother to research. <laughs> you look like a clown. And we don't like clowns over here. Birds like you love to regurgitate manosphere talking points and you don't care how you look. You just did a 16 minute video showing your ignorance and embarrassing yourself. Tragic. So if you are a black woman who pretty much went through your whole life feeling unattractive, undesirable, either it was because of your phenotype, your skin tone, whatever, and you experienced it to the point where it was traumatic and it, it shaped how you saw yourself, I understand that and I can empathize with that. I can. But you have to have some semblance of, I guess, self-reflection to understand that going and being with a white man or, or a non-man of color is not going to make all of that go away. It's not. No. Nah. Nope. You're not here to empathize with any black woman who has experienced that kind of adversity. You are here to lecture, belittle, and gloat. You're no different from any of these hateful black males. Stop being condescending. It's very unbecoming. Ladies, this woman is a walking contradiction. One moment she claims to care, and in the same breath, she's belittling black women. It's funny how she keeps denying, advocating for the whole black love when she's in that situation herself. My issue with women like her is that they love to talk about divestors without doing their homework. The issue with the current situation is that any idiot with a microphone can just go online, talk nonsense, and yet still have an audience. She is a pro-black mammy who seems to have an issue with a movement that she doesn't even understand. Her venom is misdirected. And if she were a happy person living her own life with her wealthy black husband, why would she be so invested in what divestors are doing? Or in this case, not doing. She should be out there talking to like-minded black women about black love and not doing misinformed videos about divestment. And just like how a lot of these red pill, manosphere content creators give unattractive men with poor social skills an excuse to say the way they are by telling, by telling them that they need to save themselves for better women that are never coming because they'll never have access to those women to begin with. Because it excuses the fact that all the women that they do have access to or, or that they have approached or pursued, it, it excuses that rejection away. 
And it's the same thing for this divestment movement for those black women who feel like they have not been picked. And before I go, I just wanted to say this. I am married to a successful black man that takes very good care of me. Okay? And for those reasons, you'll never catch me online bashing black men. Will you see me calling black men out on certain things? Absolutely. But you'll never, ever, ever see me associated with some foolishness concerning black men being, you know, bullet bags and gorillas. You will never see me spewing that rhetoric because I understand it is racist and anti-black. And those are not my values. In the same manner, you will never see me online telling women, oh, the black man is your king. You know, just worship him, make him feel better, coddle him, stroke his ego, make him a man. You will never see me saying that because that's nonsense. Good men deserve to be coddled. Good men deserve to be, you know, served and treated as a king. Not all. And so, again, I really think people have to stop being so extreme and they have to really think about these movements that they're joining Instead of trying to find excuses to remain the same, I think people need to really start analyzing, like, why am I, why don't I have what I want, basically? Why don't I have what I want? What is it about me that's stopping me from getting what I want? Listen, I'm not here to advocate for black love because I I don't do that anymore. I believe that black women should keep their options open to date whoever loves and appreciates them sincerely. That's what I personally believe. She doesn't believe that. And if you didn't catch that, she said that she doesn't advocate for black love anymore, which means she was a super, super, super mammy. (laughs) But now she's an ultra mammy, right? Her whole video has been about putting black women in the divestment community down while advocating for black men. She has done more caping for the black males in this video while bashing black women. She's doing a very bad job at attempting to sound fair and balanced, okay? Because we know she's not. She's none of those things. She is triggered by divestors. She came on here trying to act all fair and balanced by attempting to bring both sides of the argument, but failed miserably. She really doesn't care about black women or what they go through at the hands of black men. Every time she says, divestors of this, that, and the other, she then tries to compare us to what she believes is the equivalent of what black men do. And for me, every single time somebody starts talking like that and they make comparisons, I'm like, what are you doing? Because there is no comparison here. Saving your life should never be compared to self-hate. Not at all. And every time she does that, there is a but. You know, she'll talk about what black women are doing. Black women do this. And I know that black men do this as well. But anything after but is irrelevant. Because what you're trying to do is absolve the other group of responsibility. And what that tells me is that the only reason she keeps bringing black men up in this situation, right, is to avoid backlash. She doesn't care about the well-being of black women. While black love ended up being my story, I know for every black woman it's not going to be. However, this idea that leaving the black community and, uh, and, and, and rejecting your blackness is going to bring you a better life, you're going to stay exactly where you are. And you're never going to have what you want. And even if you do end up with a non-person of color, if they see that you are self-deprecating and self-hating, that's why they're going to be attracted to you, most likely. Because they fetishize that. So that's all I'm saying is, if this is what you're, if this is what you actively want, be very careful. Be very careful of the men that you attract while you're online doing this while you're in real life saying these things, while those are your values that you hold. Be very careful because I promise you, most of the men that you're going to attract, especially the white men, are there on some type of fetish, some type of kink stuff. No one is rejecting their blackness. 
Rejecting a dangerous community and leaving it behind does not mean that you are rejecting your blackness. It simply means that you care about you, you care about your surroundings, and you care about what happens to you. You cannot force black women to stay in a place that perpetuates their demise. How foolish does she sound assuming that divestors are trying to get into other communities by rejecting their blackness? How can you reject something that you can't change? Something that can't be helped? This is not about rejecting the perceived color of your skin. This is about rejecting the so-called community that has, for the longest time, thrived off of the abuse of black women in an effort to elevate men who can't compete on a world stage. Black women, for the longest time, have tried to make black men look good because they saw how inadequate they were in comparison to other men. You also mentioned earlier that you understand that there aren't a lot of black men who are in your husband's position, right? So if you understand that, what would you have black women do? Stay in a so-called community building bums while living in poverty? You claim that you're okay with black women opening their options, but everything you said in your video suggests otherwise. You are dishonest, intellectually disingenuous, you are venomous, condescending, and you hate other black women. I have a question for you. Have you done a video addressing black femicide? Where is your video on how disrespectful the manosphere is to black women? Mentioning that in passing isn't addressing the issue. You dedicated 16 minutes, 16 minutes talking shit about a group of women whose plight you don't understand. Clowning yourself because at the end of the day, the only thing you wanted was black men to tune in and watch you. You did not hold them accountable for anything because everything you said after but gives them a pass to keep acting like wild animals. You wild banshees are constantly embarrassing yourselves. Grow the fuck up and get out of divestment spaces. You're not welcome here. And there is nothing that you, your dusties, your educated lames can do to stop this. It's already happening. It's going to continue to happen and no one needs your permission or your opinion about any of this. Get over it. So what are your thoughts on what's been discussed today? Please leave your thoughts and comments down below. Don't forget to like, share, and subscribe to the channel. And remember, ladies, being a pro-black woman is all about self-preservation. Being pro-black community is pandering to your oppressor. The latter will always get you six feet under with no appreciation. Thank you so much for watching. This is Divested Diamonds, and I'll see you next time. Bye, Diamonds.